everyone. Let me fix this camera here. Oh, this looks strange. Thank you everybody for showing up this evening. We got a brand new style of Adjuster University Live. Today we are doing a Xactimate training. So I'd like to welcome all of the adjusters, independent adjusters, claims adjusters, public adjusters, roofers, contractors, everybody that decided to come in here. Let me get this off the screen so you're not staring off at it. I'd like to thank everybody for coming in. This is a Q&A Xactimate training. So let me just explain what we're going to be doing here today. We are going to quickly, in the interest of time, we're not going to spend too much time on this fire loss because I know more than, you know, if you've watched any of the other Adjuster University lives, I could be a bit long-winded. So I know I am not going to be able to go through this large fire loss with you in its entirety. Answer questions. I'll literally be talking all night long. So we're not going to do that. What we're going to do, we're going to go through some photographs together, some photographs that I took while out in the field looking at this fire loss. It's not a crazy fire loss. It's if, if you're a, an experienced adjuster, then you know what type of loss this is. It's really, it's really, it's a, a fire damage on the exterior of a building and smoke got in, not a lot of smoke, a little smoke, enough smoke to be a hassle to estimate for. So we're gonna be estimating for that. And we're gonna be using our smokers macro. If you know me, then you know that I always talk about using what's called the six figure macro. It's the macro that I came up with. It's the macro that I've been using for years. And a lot of people talk about it. A lot of people joke about it. But I also have, you know, and it's a part of the uh, Xactimate Gold Training Suite, as you can see right here, a uh, little ad for the Xactimate Gold Training Suite that's going to be up during this whole thing. Um, we also, inside of that, we have a smoker's macro. And the smoker's macro is really because, I'll tell you what, one of the most, for me, one of the most strenuous, just headache of an estimate that I have to put together is for smoke damage. I don't, it's, it's all Different smoke damage and fire. It's all different line items that I don't normally use. I don't want to pack it into the six figure macro. It's just going to, it's going to be too heavy. It's going to take up too much space. So we have a, I have a different macro that we use. Again, this is all part of the exact make gold training suite. And uh, we're going to be going through it in this live training. So during this live training, we are going to be going over um, this fire loss. And while we go over this fire loss, it's going to be a Q and a, so I could see everybody coming in. Um, if you, what I highly encourage everybody, I know right now we're on Facebook, we're on LinkedIn, we're on a bunch of different platforms right now. I can't stress to you enough. Sometimes we, we have software that we're using that kind of, that that's supposed to take everybody and put it together in one chat so I can see everybody in one chat. Doesn't always work that way. So I highly recommend everybody that's watching right now, jump over to YouTube, watch us on YouTube. I know as a fact, YouTube is coming over. Um, we're able to see the questions that come in from YouTube. So jump on over there. If you're on YouTube or you're not jumping to YouTube, whatever it is, guys, jump in the chat, uh, drop your name, tell us where you're from. If you're on Facebook, we don't always see the na your name come up. It'll just say Facebook user for us. So let us know your name. Drop it in there. We've got Anthony Lewis is in there. All right, Stu, guys, drop the name in. Mike Walker is in here. All right, so we're going to be get getting started with this, but uh, let me drop this in right now. We are going to be, first, I want to say, we're going to be putting on this training once a month. I'm going to push once a month. We're going to do free training just like this. We already have once a month. We do the become, uh, becoming an adjuster university live. Um, we do that the uh, third Tuesday of every month. So if you're watching this for exact training, but you're interested in becoming an adjuster, 
definitely check out the Adjust University Live, uh, becoming an independent adjuster live feeds. You could see them right, they're right on our YouTube channel. Go over to the YouTube channel or go to adjuster-university.com slash get started. You can sign up to a more formal uh, web class where I go over the whole, what the industry is all about and everything like that. For this webinar, um, we, it was not a webinar, it's a, a, a live. For this one, we are going to kind of go through this thing. This was a very impromptu live. So moving forward, we're going to, I'm going to have, we're, we're going to carve out a day, just like we do with the other one. We're going to carve out a day and every day on that, uh, every month on that day, we're going to do a live training just like this, dedicated specifically to Xactimate. Uh, we've got Cody White. Cody White's in the house. Uh, Cody White's part of the 90 day accelerated program. Go check that out guys. Uh, Kevin O'Donnell is in here. Uh, Rick McMillan is in David Augustine from Houston, Michael Sa uh, Salmon from Corpus Christi, Texas, uh, and Anthony Lewis dropped in Broward County, Florida. All right, guys, jump, jumping in there. Let's, let's make a little networking event of the, uh, the chat, wherever you're coming in from. So we kind of threw this thing together. Personally, if you know me, I'm an active independent adjuster myself. And I, you know, I, I, I'll tell you this over the last week or two, I've been pulling my hair out because I got adjust a university going on and I've got actual claims, the actual claims that I'm, that I'm handling. And I recently locked down a new client, a new, I won't say my highest paying client, but a high paying client who has been dumping volume on me shout out to everybody that says that the uh, independent adjusting industry is dying shout out to everybody that says that nobody's hiring shout out to everybody that says fee schedules are going down please if you believe any of that stuff just leave the industry so i can run your claims i will run all your claims so please get out because this industry is not dying fee schedules are not going down if you think they're going down it's because your marketing sucks and not enough companies want you all right so, Chief Morgan, Tampa, Florida, and uh, Anthony Lewis is in South Dakota working roof claims. I'm guessing those are those, those uh, hail claims. All right. So, what we're going to be doing here, and by the way, right now, I'm coming at you. This is my actual office. Those are my actual kids right behind me. This is where I smash through claims This is part of the time. Whenever I'm working on a big one, uh, I'm not going to be doing it in my office. Uh, I'm not going to be doing it in my truck. If, when I'm doing daily claims, I like to just do it in the truck, bang it out real quick, quick $2,500, quick $5,000, even $10,000, $15,000. I'll bang it out in my truck real quick as it's fresh. But when it's bigger, I don't want to do that. I want the multiple screens. I've got three screens here all together. That helps me put, you know, picture on one screen, estimate on the other. And, uh, you know, something else on the on the other one here. So once again, as we go through this, drop questions that you have. I will do my absolute best to address them. And unlike the other Adjuster University Live that we do, the Becoming an Independent Adjuster Live, I will be doing my best to answer these questions as they come in. And the other one, we just answer them all at the end. This one, we're going to be taking breaks. And I will answer them as we go along. So I want you to take a nice, big, long look at my face because it is about to be going away. I'm going to share my screen with all of you. John from Chicago, what's happening? I'm going to share my screen with everybody here. And you won't be able to see me. You'll be able to see my Xactimate. So let's push you over here. Okay, share screen. And here we go. All right, we are in. Let me see if I could drop me in here. Can I put me in here somewhere? Nope, doesn't look like I can. All right, so here we are. Let's pull our pictures up here. Here's our house. Here is our subject. Let me open this up for you. Boom! How's that? All right. So 
Let me tell you guys right now. Oh, Curtis Baker's in the house. Guys, if you want a certified financial planner to get your shit together, go hit up Curtis Baker. Go find him. He's coming in on LinkedIn. Oh, Mike. Mike, Mike McCoola came in. We just did a podcast, just a six figures podcast with Mike McCoola. He's checking in. Veronica Shaw, what's happening? All right. So once again, we got a pretty, uh, th- this for me is going to be a longer one, but we're not going to go through this entire, uh, th- this entire estimate here. Um, I'm going to go through just part of it and kind of get your feel. We're going to go through sketch and we're going to do some estimate items. But first, before we do any of that, we're going to go through some photographs, get some ideas here. So this is our subject right here. This is the dwelling. Okay, let me go back. All right, so we got a flat roof right here. Got some overviews of the flat roof. Okay, boom. I took a picture here. Um, You're going to understand why I took a picture of this. Let's see if I can get this a little bigger for you. Might not look like much, but as you can see right over here, we've got a tarp over the neighboring structure's roof. And that's because this loss originated on uh, from the neighboring home. So it originated from the neighboring home and so, some, uh, you know, the fire, the heat coming from it. These are, as you saw in the first picture, these houses are very close together. So the heat came in and did some damage. Now, wh- what do we have right here? See this rippling right here. The heat will cause the bitumen surface to expand. And once it cools off, it will start to contract. And you're going to get ripples just like this. So we took some pictures of that because we want to get the roof in there too. We want to get as much. If you know me, I do not try to save anybody money. I want to write the biggest estimate I possibly can so I can make the most amount of money. Now, here we go. Now I got a better picture right here. Here's some of the damage. Now, we've got vinyl siding right here vinyl siding and underneath that siding who here watching tell me what type of siding this is drop it in the chat we'll see who's got it right but looks we got old old siding right here that has been exposed because that vinyl has melted so we know right just by looking at this we're going to need to take care of not only the vinyl siding we're going to have to also take and do something about all this old asphalt because at this point, we're not going to, you know, what, just clean it and put more new siding on top. We're not going to do any of that. So we're going to give them give them new uh, vinyl siding, but we're, we're going to get rid of all that, give it a nice level surface. OK, so let's get back to this picture here. Now, before we go on any further, let's see. We got somebody coming in from Facebook. Let me see if I can get this on here. Facebook, what are your thoughts on photo labeling apps? Uh, very good question. I will give you my thoughts. Personally, I'm very, I, I want to apologize in advance if anybody gets offended from this answer. I do, I have not found a photo labeling app that solves the problem of photo labeling. To be completely honest with you, I don't really find there to be a problem. There are apps that are out there that seem pretty cool. And they're pretty cool because you can take a picture with this app and you can label it right there. And then you can have like captions that drop in and, you know, you you put the caption in there. So it already knows that you're in a bedroom. You don't have to type out those letters for a bedroom. But listen, we're not going to be going over the photographs, the photo report in this lesson. In the Xactimate Gold Training Suite, we do all of that because we have estimating and scoping inside of that. It's the best training that's out there. But we're not going to go over that in this. But you'll see as you go through it, there's really nothing to be. Uh, these photo labeling apps, it's not a problem. You know, they're, they're not solving a problem for me. Maybe one day uh, they will. But it's it's really not really not that big of a problem. Okay. Uh, so let's put that away. All right. So let's go through these pictures. So guys, if you have any questions, drop it in there. Listen, we got two hours. Hang- We're hanging for two hours. Drop some questions in there. Drop your name in there. All right. Ask around, see if anybody's got some claims, try to land some claims while you're here. All right. Here we go. Got our address verification. Now, some of these photos, I want to let you, this is our right elevation photo. As you can see, look at that. Look at that distance. You got, what, what is that? Three feet between that and the uh, neighboring house. And you can see, you can see the origin right there. Who, th- who 
Boom. Right there. Okay. All right. Hey, let me throw this out there before I go any further. My man, Cody White, coming in. Xactimate Gold. Highly recommend for new Xactimate users. All right. Listen to Cody. Listen to Cody here. He knows what he's talking about. He's in there. He's in the 90-day program. All right. So here we go. Here's our rear elevation. So let's take a little zoom in here. First of all, look at this. All right. What happens when you don't have an ashtray? Right there. Boom. All right. So let's zoom in here. So this is pretty interesting here. Now, when you look at it, you look at this side here. I don't really see anything. Aside, aside from this corner, corner post right here, this vinyl siding's okay. Seems all right. All right. Bring it back. Come over here. Not so much, right? This stinks. All right, we got soot. So, so what am I looking at right here? Well, we know for sure that there was soot. So the somebody's gonna have to do some windows here, right? Somebody's gonna have to clean these windows. And this siding here is gonna have to be replaced. Now, the question is, now how much siding are we gonna replace here? Are we gonna just replace the siding over here? Are we gonna replace the siding over here? Well, the answer to that question really depends on the uh, depends on the state that you're in and depends on the insurance carrier that you're working with and how cheap they are. All right. Now, of course, as independent adjusters, we make our money off the bottom line. So why wouldn't we want to replace everything? Now, in this particular case, uh, New Jersey is not what's called a matching state. So insurance companies really don't owe to match unless they go to court and court normally sides with the policyholder. So I don't want to do any of that. So I'm going to be replacing all of the vinyl siding here. If they're not cool with that, that's fine. They could tell me that and we'll figure that out later. All right. So here's some other better close-up photos right here. This is pretty typical whenever you have high heat. Okay. If you've ever put a grill near vinyl siding, you'll get something like that. Now this side right here, this side obviously was uh, facing, is facing the originating uh, structure, so it's going to be a little bit worse on this side. Okay, you see that. Now, what do I see right here? This is interesting. What do I see right here? Insulation board. Okay, so I want to point out we see insulation board here, but we don't see insulation board over here. Zoom in, it's just not there. I'll tell you what. Is it there? It actually does look like it's there right down here. Insulation board. Okay. It's also a good time to point out that I did not do this estimate yet. We're doing it together. All right. We're going to do, we're, we're actually doing this estimate together, but there's one big difference between you and I. I'm going to get paid on this estimate. Sorry guys, but you get some free training out of it. So let's jump back to where we were. Okay. So what that tells me right here is that here are the layers that we have. We have a layer of vinyl siding. We have a layer of insulation board. Um, and then we have a layer of that old asphalt siding. So with the asphalt siding, it is a no brainer that I'm going to take off all the asphalt siding on the primary side of this elevation. Now I'm going to, I'm going to do the entire elevation, including this little section right here. But I wouldn't be surprised if I wouldn't be completely surprised if the insurance carrier comes by and says, hey, it wasn't affected. Um, that's it. So there we go. Oh, I don't know what I was doing here. Daydreaming. OK, so this is another photograph that I took of the um, uh, left elevation from the ground. OK, there we go. That's it. OK, now the insured first took me into the basement. We're not going to be doing the basement. So I'm going to skip out of there. But you know what? I'll take you through it real quick. So the basement was really the worst affected area. Uh, we're not going to do the basement because I think the basement will just kind of take us a little bit too long. Amen. All right. This is pretty, you know, if you're not already familiar, this is a very easy way to figure out uh, whether or not soot came in. It turns all the cobwebs black. All right, here we go, going through. So, you know, this basement, they left the windows open. This thing happened. The fire happened. This has obviously nothing to do with the loss. We take a picture of that just 
because we want to just make sure that everybody knows that this we, we did see that, but it's got nothing to do with the fire. Okay. Go through. Okay. So and the reason why now, if you know me, if you know my training, I don't start in the basement. I always start top to bottom. But the insured needed to get their um, the person who lives upstairs together. So in here is what we got. So this is a little entry going in. There's nothing going on here. Overall, the, the building is in so-so condition. Um, so it can be a little bit troublesome when you're out in the field and you're doing a fire claim like this, doing really a smoke claim like this and the house is already dirty you know it's it, it, it could be a little tricky if you go in there with a chemical sponge which is great to have in situations like this um you know you're gonna be wiping trying to get soot off the wall and you're gonna get probably a decade's worth of just crud on there so anyway so we go through let me jump forward here to the kitchen the kitchen is really what we're worried about because these windows right here, this is the second level and this is the window that's on the rear elevation. Okay. So, and then on the left elevation, we'll get to that right here. So we got some water damage right here. This is water damage coming in from when they extinguished the fire. Okay. And then we got this window coming in here and we had soot that came in. Okay. So, we had soot that came in here. We got water damage here. And when we're handling, when I, at least me, I'm sure that there's going to be some, you know, really smart adjusters that may be watching this that are going to argue with what I say. And, and that's fine. Everybody's welcome for their own opinion. Whenever I do a fire claim, I always try to have some sort of philosophy on, on, on how I'm going to do everything. So this here, the soot came into this room. So I'm going to probably do the most amount of repairs here. And my repairs are really going to consist of fixing the ceiling, the, the water damage on the ceiling. Okay. Whatever I don't replace for the water damage, we are going to clean, seal, and paint. I'm going to take you through that as well. Now we've got wallpaper on the wall. Do you clean, seal, and paint the wallpaper? Absolutely not. You don't do that. But the wallpaper, we're just going to go ahead and replace. I'm going to take that wallpaper off. We're going to replace it. This beaded paneling down here, we're going to do this. We're going to paint. We're going to clean, seal, paint. Okay. Now, mind you, it's really not that bad. It is really not that bad in here. We're just going to do, um, for these cabinets, we're not going to reface or anything like that. We're going to clean them up. Okay. This is a little laundry room. It's just a, you know, it's really a closet that they removed the door from and just threw some, threw a washer and dryer in there. Okay. Now this hallway connects to the kitchen. There's a kitchen right there. So we're going to have a slightly different scope here. Instead, what we're going to do, we're just going to, uh, we're just going to clean. We're going to clean this room. We're going to clean, uh, this is actually, uh, so this is one of the bedrooms. This bedroom is uh, connected to the kitchen or connected to the hallway. We're going to clean this. We're going to clean the floor. We're not going to do anything in the closets because you, you, you notice know, we've already cleaned two rooms from the kitchen. We're, we're, we're Clean ceiling, painting the kitchen. That opens into the hallway. Uh, we're going to clean the hallway, and we will uh, take it one step further and clean the bedroom that's connected to the hallway. But that's about as far as we're going to go. This is another, be this is another um, bedroom that's up here. Very minimal smoke. I mean, I I'm giving a benefit of the doubt, to be honest, uh, with the smoke being in this room. Like I said, it's, it's really tough to tell because it's a bit um, dirty as it is. You got a window that's open. I'm not going to do anything about this closet. And then you have a bathroom here. The bathroom is also connected to the hallway. We're going to clean the bathroom as well. You can see my hand right over there. We're going to clean the bathroom as well, but I also made sure to take some pictures. 
pictures of uh, some mold growth that's going on here. Okay. Who here can take a pretty good guess? I know that the, the pictures won't really tell the answer that well, but who here can give me an idea why we got some fungus growing on here? Is it a water damage from a roof leak? Is it a pipe that could be above the second level um, that's over this and it's leaking and just causing water damage? You know, is that the case? You know, you can see if we jump over here, we've got this fun fungi growing, you know, over here, really along the edges here, all the way up there. Drop it in there. All right. That was quick. Lack of ventilation. That's it. You know what you don't see in this picture? And this is what I was saying. The pictures don't really tell you the answer. You don't see a vent. There's no window. There's no vent. You take a hot shower in here. Guess where that steam goes? Nowhere. All right. So, and I believe that that is, yeah, you just got a light right there. So, and this takes us to the first floor. Okay. Here we go. Get started by, we are going to do some exterior repairs here. So let's get back to our exterior repair. Mike came in, said no exhaust. Mike, you're right, man. But where were you at? Right on the draw, buddy. All right. So let's answer some questions here. Guys, we're taking a little question break. Uh, so if you got questions, this is a good time to throw it in there. We're going to go through, uh, somebody asked how much is it for the university? Um, that, uh, it's, it's, uh, I'll tell you what, it's kind of pricey. Just go over to adjuster-university.com. Click on the link. Okay. It's, uh, for the full, there's a couple different versions that you can have. Uh, so go over there, check it out. I won't try to sell you on that right now. All right. So. Here's a good one. Is there a claims checklist that you follow? How many steps on the checklist? Is there a physical checklist that I follow? No. Okay. Because as far as I'm concerned, I'm not flying a plane. I already know the process that I follow. I follow the same process. And this is like, and this is one of the things that we teach uh, in the 90 day program, 90 day accelerator program. You want to be a robot. You don't want to treat every single inspection as if it were a new inspection, completely unique and different. You follow the same routine no matter what. Okay, so uh, checklist, no, but formula, technique, yes. Okay, so here's uh, what else do we have here? Would that be considered sudden and accidental uh, melted siding? Yeah. I mean, it was sudden, right? This happened pretty suddenly. And then this happened. Okay. So let's see. Uh, I'm going to throw this in here. Stupidity is a covered loss. Yeah. Most of the time it is. All right. So uh, Jody Reeves, how's it going? All right. Humidity. Let's see. Open the window. Absolutely. Oh, what did I just do? Sorry. Here we go. What camera do I use? All right. So it's a good question. What camera do I use? Well, normally I use just a cheap Canon. I don't like using expensive cameras uh, because I will be the first to tell you that I go through about two, three cameras a year. I go through a couple cameras a year because I'm all thumbs. I drop them and, you know, and that's it. For this inspection, I was using my iPhone 13. And the reason why I've, I've been using my iPhone 13 is because uh, about three weeks ago, my truck was involved in an accident. Somebody was in a rush. And because of supply chain shortages, it's still being repaired. And my uh, camera batteries are in there and I'm just too lazy to go get it. All right. Let's see. 
Anthony right here, Spring Ni Ni Nino, um, Nino. Uh, when you started IA Independent Adjusting, what were majorities of the claim? What were a majority? What were a majority claims that, that you dealt with? Um, well, I really, well, technically, I started liability, um, but once I started, I got my break uh, doing wind claims. So a majority of them were wind claims. And then started, uh, you know, a month or two in, started incorporating some daily claims into that. Okay. Uh, and also he comes in, uh, Canon Power Shot is a good one. Yeah, it's a good one. Uh, Canon Power Shot camera, that'll do it. Um, so, yeah. Um, Canon Power Shot, I've got a Canon Power Shot. That's what I got. All right. So, here's what we're going to do here. So, I've got right here the sketch and we're going to recreate this right here and i apologize i know there's a couple couple names in here that i recognize and i know that right now we're doing some pretty easy stuff so i want to let you know now this uh you know we're gonna go through a real basic process here we're gonna do elevations first and then we're gonna jump through and do this all right, so I put it in digital format right here, so I didn't wouldn't put everyone through the excruciating process of looking at my chicken scratch, which again, usually I have one of those nice uh, clipboards with the ridges on there, so you get the straight lines. Well, I don't have that right now. Uh, that's in my truck, and so the my sketches are pretty god awful. Okay, so is what we're going to do. Oh, don't want that. All right. Let's do a little split screen action. Bam. There we go. So what we have going on already, let's go over to our sketch. Oh, here's a good one. I want to throw this in here. If you have an old cell phone that still works, it won't bother you falling off a roof. Use that better picture quality, and you don't have to fuss with memory cards. So, yes, that's absolutely true. To, uh, Patrick has a great point there. Here's what I will say, and I just shared this with a uh, sh shared this with a uh, public adjuster too. Yes, you can absolutely do that if you are real quick at the draw for getting photographs off of that of that cell phone. Great, just do that. What I will say is um, to fuss with the memory card. I don't fuss with the memory card. I don't have an issue with the memory card. I take the pictures. I pop, once I get back to my laptop, I pop open that thing and uh, I slide and I just slide it into the side and it's the side of the laptop. Boom, upload the pictures, take it out, done. That's it. Right now, what I'm doing, I have to really wait for my iPhone to sync up with my Google Photos because then, then once it syncs up with the Google Photos, I can go into my Google Photos download them into a zip and then I go into the zip and I take the photos out. If there's a better way of doing that, I'd love to know. Tell me because right now it's awful. Okay. Kevin O'Donnell, would this be considered a subrogation claim? How would you write this? Uh, is it considered a subrogation claim all day, every day? Absolutely. It started from the neighbor's house. I mean, we don't know what caused it. That will be the big question. Uh, we don't know what caused it. Uh, so if it, uh, uh, so that will really determine whether or not it's a subrogation claim, but smells like a subrogate smells like subrogation all day to me, because what's probably going to happen here is nobody's uh, unless they're, um, I would imagine, and, and maybe I'm speaking a little too fast right here. No one at that house. I, I believe they said that the ha that the fire originated on the outside of the house, not on the inside of the house. So if it originated on the outside of the house, most likely somebody was smoking a cigarette or enjoying some of that, you know, legal New Jersey weed and, uh, you know, weren't paying attention. And then a fire started. Boom. Nobody's going to admit to that. Nobody. All right. Nobody's going to admit it was an accident. And then they're probably going to send a, a, a CO out there, cause and origin investigator. And that investigator might just come back and say, yeah, it was, it was probably, you know, something, somebody did that. Uh, so how would I write this knowing that? How you write it normal? 
write it as you would normally. If you got to follow some specific guidelines with the carrier that you're working with, then that's what you do. But um, yeah, you just write this up the normal way. And what I will say too, and you know, just throwing this out there, when you have a claim that is blatantly sub row, you're going to get subrogation on it. What I have noticed is that sometimes the insurance company or third party administrator, whoever you're working with are a bit more lenient on, let's say, a little touch of excessiveness, okay? Because they know they're just going to end up going after another carrier for it anyway. Okay, so uh, let's see anybody else. Similar one, what is the adjuster's responsibility in a segregation claim other than what's normally needed? Well, it really depends. Uh, are you the adjuster that is working directly with the insurance company? Are you an independent adjuster where, and you're working with an insurance company that really doesn't want you doing anything. They just want you to go out there, take pictures, write an estimate. Don't worry. Nobody. And, and, and there's not going to be any closing. There's not going to be any, any negotiation. Or are you a general adjuster? You work on this thing from start to finish. Really depends. Uh, uh, what I will tell you for me on this particular claim, um, my responsibility is just to give them as much information as possible. And in this case, I couldn't get any information from the homeowner here about who there's renters in this house. Couldn't get any information on the owner. So I looked up the uh, tax. I, I looked up the uh, the tax, the, not the tax filing, but the tax records for the house. Very super easy. You find out who the owner is and that's it. You put the owner and then they have their uh, home address on there. You drop that in there. Boom. You're just giving the subrogation department a, um, you know, something to go off of. All right, Anthony, coming back. Do you pay for a hotspot service in order to write up estimates on X1 on the go? I want to start writing up estimates in my car when I'm done with my inspections. You should absolutely do that. Um, the hotspot that I use, I, I just got, man, I don't even know. Um, you know, I, I've got the biggest data plan I could possibly have on my iPhone. And I just go off of that. And it's pretty, uh, works pretty good. Okay. Um, and let's see. And I believe that that's it. So let's jump over here. We're going to work on this we're done with the questions for now guys drop them in there we're going to do this diagram i'm going to talk about this with you for a little bit and then we're i'll check for some more questions so there are two different ways that you can do elevations inside of exactly two ways you could do it basically as taking an elevation and treating it as if it were a room or you can do it and you know the best way that i can explain it you um, do the dimensions inside of the estimate items. I'm not going to go through that with you. Instead, what, uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to build them up as rooms. What, which one you, which method you go with is really going to depend on the company that you are working with. Okay. They may tell you that they want it done a certain way, and that's the way that you got to do it. If they don't tell you that they want it done in a certain way, then you do it the way that you feel would put together the best estimate. In my opinion, it's treating it as if it were a room because then you can create openings just like you see right here. And I mean, you're going to get, it's, it's just much easier to build, you know, in my opinion. So here's what we're going to do. Let's zoom in here. Okay. So what we see, we have a room. Okay. Let's drop a room in right here. So we got the room button right up here and we drop our room down, comes in as a 12 by 12 room. So we're going to bring it out 23 and a half wide. So I could just click and drag, click the marker, drag it out, find 23 and oh, there we go. So I want you to really pay attention to what just happened there. And, and, and this is going to show how much I'm out of my mind. What you just saw there was more than just me dragging it out. What you saw there was me putzing around trying to get it to the exact number that I need. Okay. I don't like that because that's time. 
That's time that I don't get paid extra for. So whenever I possibly can, I like to do this. Watch this. Boom, 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 done. All right. What I just did, I just moved it a little bit just to activate. This turns blue. Okay. And I just press it and I put the number that I want. That's it. Don't have to worry about it. What I do normally, this really doesn't matter. This doesn't matter all too much, but normally what I do when I'm doing elevations and sketch like this, I like to knock out the, um, I like to make the thickness of the wall zero. Okay. So it kind of knocks out the appearance of a wall. Now uh, I'm going to diverge from the, uh, from this current claim real quick. Just to explain to you why I do this. Okay. So let's say that this was the front of a house and on, and it's a two story house and there is a gable, uh, there's a gable end facing it. There's a gable end coming off the first level and it's facing out. Um, if that's the case, then here's what I would do. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it'll probably make sense in a second. I would do something like this. Okay. Now, fascia, let's say the fascia is six, six inches thick. Instead of this four, I'd make it six. So kind of, it gives you a little bit of a better representation of the actual appearance of an elevation. Okay. And if you really want to get technical, you know, you could uh, maybe change the, the thickness up here, something like that. Okay. So let's go back. Control Z. All right. I like to use as many hot keys as I possibly can. And I can't go that far back. Thanks a lot, Exact Mate. Okay. Let's just get rid of this. I like to use as many hot keys as I possibly can. Cody could probably tell you, you know, as he, he's going through the Exact Mate Gold training suite. I use them all day because I'm faster. It's just faster to use them. Okay. So let's put this back here. Oh, goodness gracious. All right. 20 and a half. So we have our elevation here. Actually, let me take this out. We're going to make it the same. After we make the wall thickness uh, to bring the wall thickness to zero, our area gets a little bit bigger. So let's just fix this up real quick. Boom. 23 and a half. Here we go. Double click it. We get the room properties right here. What do we want to name it? Rear elevation. Bam. There we go. Okay. So we have our rear elevation right here. Now, these little green boxes here, these are reference blocks. Okay. You could use these. If this were a regular room, you would use this to you know, put uh, cabinets on the wall, because let's say you've got a kitchen, you've got cabinets on the wall, you got backsplash on the wall, you know, and you need to paint the walls. Well, you don't want to, you're not painting behind the cabinets. So insurance companies and, you know, for, and rightfully so, they're going to want you to drop reference blocks in here in there to deduct certain things like the linear foot of a baseboard or, you know, the square footage of the wall behind it. So for this, we're going to do that. We're going to utilize these reference blocks but we're going to use it to block out the square footage behind when, you know, rep that where there are windows. Okay. So reference block is right up here and the tools right here. Okay. So big difference between reference block and area when you're doing the area, double click on that. Um, you don't have the options to block things out. So we get our block, drop it in there. I do the same thing for this. You know, I, I, I try not to put around unless I really just, you know, don't care um, about time. And I do that. Call it windows. And most importantly, you come down here to the behavior and the behavior. You're going to have the ability to uh, alter what you want to do with it. Should I remove the floor linear feet behind? Remove the ceiling linear feet, remove the square foot behind, remove the square foot under, remove the square foot above. Okay. Now, again, 
we're kind of using exact me in a way that's not exactly the way that it's intended to be used. Um, although this is a much better way to use it. So we're acting as if this were a room. So if this were a room, okay, we would want no square footage under this block. All right. So you can just do that. Often what I do, if I know it doesn't matter, I'll just go like a highlight one, arrow down tab, arrow down tab, arrow down tab, arrow down tab, arrow down tab. And I'll do that do, 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 super quick. You know why I do it super quick? Cody, speak on it. Every click on the mouse is an extra dollar you are losing. And I don't like you losing money. You probably don't either. All right, so let's zoom in for you. There we go. Four by three, call it a window. All right, I'm going to highlight that. Control C. You know what I just did? I copied. Now, you know what I do now? Control V. Boom! There it is. Drop it in. Now, here's the thing that Xactimate does. And it's just like one of those things. You would think that with this new version of Xactimate, somebody would say, hey, I don't think we need to do that anymore. What, it, what happens is you drop that in. It goes to window one. And then if I drop in another and another, window two, window three. All right. I didn't copy window one. I just copied window. If I wanted one, I could put one. So, you know, maybe I'm just being uh, extra picky, but I don't like that in there. I just... It's just a window. I'm not naming the window. So here we go. Come on, baby. So here we are in our sketch right here. So we're going to put another window up here. I'm going to control V it again. All right, because control V and just dumping this in and manipulating the size as it is right here is a bit faster than... doing that, okay? Boom. It's already there. See what I'm saying? All right. So let's bring this up. Six, eight. Boom. I want that window one. I just want it to say window. Block one. I don't want block one. I hate when people use a reference block and they don't change the name. Change the name. All right. Take some freaking pride in your work. Door. All right. There's your rear elevation. Jump over to the left elevation real quick to bring this down got annotations in here this comes uh comes standard with the uh um macro right here we go i'll tell you what you know what we could do here I, I, i'm gonna flip the script here because as you remember these are kind of really two different elevations so what we could do here watch this move i'm gonna create a little wall here i'm gonna create a wall which is gonna divide this into two different sections and then ultimately it's going to be divided into two different walls. It's going to be two different rooms. I apologize, two different rooms, but I want this to be one room just called the rear elevation, but I want like a line like we have over here with the left elevation, just to kind of distinguish, be able to visually distinguish the different actual planes of siding. So here's what we do. I'm going to highlight this room, hold the control button down, holding it down. Okay. Then as I hold it down, I'm going to grab this marker, click and drag. It's not going to work because the stupid windows are right here. So you know what? I'm just going to leave it right there. All right. I let go of everything and I got that room. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move these out of the way. Of course, the little stupid one shows up and I'm just going to scoot this thing over. There we go. All right. Now that it's scooted over, we can move our windows back in. There we go. We got our windows. Let's get rid of these ones. And now we have real elevation and room two. So what do we do here when we really just want it to be one room? And we're going to go through this as we, we're going to do this again, uh, do something very, very similar to this as we go through the interior sketch. We are going to, here's what, here's what I do. I'm going to name this also the rear elevation. And the only reason why I do that is because it's going to show up in the actual estimate. It's going to say what it is. I could put right side or something like that, uh, which really would make more sense. So sure, I'll put that. It doesn't matter because here's what's going to happen. I'm going to make this a subgroup of the real elevation. And what that does is now there will not be two different rooms shown on the estimate. Instead of two different rooms, 
It will just say the rear elevation. So if I put a line item in the rear elevation, it will not only just calculate the square footage in this room, it's going to calculate the square footage in this area, in this area as well. Now, here's a big thing that it fuck, it, 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 I almost dropped an F-bomb on there. It drives me crazy when I see this because I feel like it's just unnecessary. Go to click on the room, that, that extra part, and just switch it over from where it says show label. Just turn it off. Okay. It just gives you like a cleaner. It just looks cleaner, right? I mean, am I crazy right here? It just looks cleaner, right? So there you go. Now you're able, when this gets printed out, just like here, you get to distinguish the two different areas. All right, let's 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 move on. Left elevation. We're going to do this. Drop it in. All right, we got our button. Switch it over. Zero wall thickness. 5410 by 20 and a half. All right, switch this over. 5410 by how much? 20 and a half. Bam. Okay, I'm going to click this one because I want to put another wall out five foot four inches. Bam. Hold control button down. Oh boy, here we go. Let's try that again. Select the wall, hold control button down, stretch it out. Five four. Here we go. Five five. I want five four, not five five. There we go. So double click here. We want to name this the left elevation. All right. Now what I'm going to do, real super quick. What's going on here? You can't see my hands, but here's what's going on. I typed left. It automatically put in left elevation for me. It knows what I'm thinking. But before I go any further, here's what I'm going to do. Control button down. A. That's select all. I still got my finger on control. C, bam, it is copied. Now, enter. Now this is called left elevation. Double click on this little thing. Control V, boom, left elevation. It's in there. Now switch the show label to off. Make it a subgroup of left elevation. Bam, there we go. Real quick, we're right back to square one. I'll go over to the rear elevation where I got these little boxes. I'm going to select one of them. Control down, letter C. Control down, letter V. Bam, bam. All right, take those numbers out, clean it up. All right, like a baby's butt, we want to clean them up. All right, we got two more windows. Boom, boom, there we go. Get rid of them, get rid of those ones. There we go. Now, I got this little annotation guy right here, okay? Because I like quality, you know, they, they like quality. Let's double click that. I don't want to call it wind damage, Let's call it fire damage, boom, okay? I'll put it right here so, we all, so we're all aware. I'm going to take that X as it's selected. Control button down, C. Now here's what I do. Boom, 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 boom. You know, put a bunch of put a bunch of these in there. You know, several different ways you could do this. There you go. And then we're going to put them put them on here as well. Okay. There are some carriers that are out there. They want you to annotate these things. Some of them want you to annotate it in different ways. All right. I had a carrier or claims company that wanted it to be done with three X's at a time. So they're out of their freaking minds. All right. Here we go. Let's jump over here. Now, before we get started, let's, uh, let's address some questions. Okay. Do we have any questions? Um, let's see. Uh, it does not look like we do. Emerald Glassy, bam, bam. Kick it up a notch. Yeah, we're going to kick it up a notch. All right, no questions. No questions. We're going to keep this party moving, okay? Because we are at, we're approaching the one hour mark, okay? So, let's get shaking. All right, here we go. Here's our diagram right here. Jump over to second level. All right. If you're watching this and you're like, wait a freaking minute, my exact mate doesn't have exterior, second level, first level, basement level. It says main level. I don't have these little things that just automatically pop up. I don't have coverage A dwelling. I don't have coverage B other structures. I don't have any of that stuff. That's because you ain't got the macro dude. All right. And you're going to see exactly what that's about once we go over to estimate items. So we're going to start in the kitchen here. So here's what we're going to do. Here's the thing. This is a trade-off, what we got here. My sketch, my handwritten sketch, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn this off real quick. I want to show you this garbage. Hey, check this out. Awful. All right. Your boy.
boy slipping. All right, let's get back to it here. All right, let's make our kitchen. Now, the, the crap part here is we're going to have to do some stupid math. All right, so 6, 1 plus 2, 10 comes out to 8, 11. Let's bring this 8, 11. Boom. Okay, this comes down to 3, 2. Watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to bring this up to 3, 2. Bring this down to 3, 2. Down, up, left, right. All right, now I'm going to create a little cut right here and then bring it down. I'm gonna create that by using the square break, which is you can click the button right here. Where is it? It's somewhere up here, right? I don't even know where it is, right up here. Or if you, if you look real close, I know I'm zoomed out. If you look real close, what you could do, you could click on that button, you know, if, uh, if you're a square, or you could just let her be on your keyboard and that activates it. So see, now I can move around this box and we get all those little numbers pop up. So here's what I do. I'm just going to drop it right here. I'm not going to really pay attention to where it is. I'm just going to drop it there, and it divides this wall into two different sections with two different markers. I'm going to grab one of these markers. I'm just going to pull it down. Not holding control down, not doing any of that. Just going to pull it down. Boom. All right. So what we don't have here is the measurement for the length of this wall here. You see this wall right here, this little thing? We don't have the measurement of that. So let's just, uh, you know, what we should do in situations like that when you miss a measurement, which happens, okay, which happens, it's not a big deal, it's a little tiny thing, just go to your photos. Because you're taking photographs in every corner of the room, right? There you go. There it is. Let's go, let's go, let's go one four. Let's go one three. One three sounds good. Bam. Okay. Go away, photos. All right, one, so we got three, two, one, three. This comes out three, five. Square break, right? Letter B. Here we go. I'm gonna click on it, boom. One, three. Highlight the room. Now I'll fix this number. This is a four, three right now, but I wanna bring this down to three, five. All right, now we got that. Now we have right over here, three, six. Bring this down to three, six. There we go. Now this comes out, Jesus Louises, two nine plus three six. That is, what is that? Six three, what is that? Three nine. My brain is shot from coffee today. Two nine plus three six. What do we got? We got five foot um, three, right? Am I getting that right? Five three? Let me know if I didn't get that right. I'm sure somebody here is good at math. So I'm going to drop my square break in. I'm going to bring this down. I already know this comes down to one six. So I'll bring this down to one six and then I'll correct this one right here. What was it? Five, three. No, six, three, right? Bam. There we go. Uh, I just want to uh, stop right here real quick. Uh, Mike said, scale it. Mike, let me know what you mean on that. I think I know what you mean, but I don't want to go into a whole thing trying to uh, um, talk about that. Okay. Uh, Cody White, Cody White coming in. I always keep a feet and inches calculator handy on your desk. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. And then here's the answer. Six, three. Thank you, sir. All right. So here we go. There's a room. There's a kitchen. I'm not going to name it, okay? All I'm worried about right now is just building out room. So here we go. This is what I talked about before. This little this little offset right here. This is, let me show you, right here. That's where you got the refrigerator and all that. So let's do it. Square break. All right, we're going to square break it, but we're going to do it a little bit different this time. I'm going to drop it in right here. Now I'm going to pull this out, but if I pull it out as it is, it goes like that. What's the big deal? Let's go to 3D mode. What it does, it just it just extends the room out. There's no lip, you know. That's not here. So we fix that by instead of doing that, square break, pick a spot, hold the control button down, grab onto that marker and start stretching it up. How far do we want to go up? Well, it says 5 feet. 
So bring it up five feet, stretch it out. And we want this to be two eight. There we go. And that's a room. Now what we're going to do here, we're going to put a missing wall right here because the missing wall, the missing wall feature allows you to dictate how much of this wall you want up here. Do you want any of the wall here? Do you want wall down here, like a little knee wall situation? You're able to adjust it as much as you want there. Okay, so there we go. We got the kitchen put together. Now we're gonna start to build out all the other rooms. So we're gonna go through these rooms a little bit faster now. We're gonna grab this wall, control down, grab that marker, bring it down. It says two seven on there, bring it down two seven. We got it, okay? And then we have two rooms in here. One was just a cavity, cavity being just an em emptiness. You can't get to it, okay? So, and that one right here, it, the cavity is three feet. So I'm gonna click on this marker while I hold the control button down, drag it over until the right side says three feet. Then once it says that, I'm gonna highlight this room. This is a cavity and I'm gonna hit the delete button. That gets rid of it. But actually I'm gonna keep it on there for right now because if I get rid of that, then I'm gonna have more of a difficulty um, building out rooms around it. So I'm just gonna leave it there for at least right now. Bathroom, I'm gonna grab this wall, hold control button down, drag it down. Looks like it's eight three, drag it down eight three, fix it up, boom. And now I'm gonna drag it this way until I meet the wall. That's why I kept that room there because now it's a little bit easier for me to do that. All right, now I'm gonna start building out this hallway. Click on this wall, bring it all the way down, just a little bit past the end of the bathroom. And it looks like we have a slight little, boom, little uh, curve right there, see that? So I'm just gonna grab on this guy right here, this little red marker. All right, it's at the corner, like that, bam. Now on the outside of it, it's 2-1. And look, lucky, it says 2-1. All right, there we go. Let's get to the other side here. We have 1-6 right here. And then it, you see how this just kind of comes out this way? So here's what I'm gonna do. Square break B. I'm gonna click here and drag. I'm not holding control down or anything like that. I'm just clicking and dragging. I'm really not paying too much of attention. Here, I'm gonna drag it out 3-8 because I see it's 3-8. I'm just gonna drag it there. I often, I will just drop that square break in and just kind of do the mold of the room. I won't really try to get the measurements correct the first time around. I won't spend too much time just trying to get it perfectly. I just want to create the overall shape of it and then I can putz around with it, change it around and make it more accurate later. Okay, so let's 10-4. All right, grab this wall control button down, right? We're gonna bring this down, 14-6. There we go. I'm gonna bring this this way. There we go. Now, one thing I like to do, sometimes people just kind of do this. See how these aren't even right here? I hate that. Best way to do it, just create a little room right here for right now, and you'll see the difference. Look, it's a four inch difference. Square it off, make it nice. Click on this, delete. Okay, there we go. Now we're gonna zoom out. Now that we got the overall shape of the room, let's put the names in. Kitchen, all right. Who remembers how we did this little spare room right here? Double click, copy. Double click here, control V, paste. Enter, show label, no. Subgroup of the kitchen. There we go. There we go. Laundry room. I just put LAU and it already tells me. This is that cavity. Goodbye. Hit the delete button and it's gone. Bathroom, put it in. Hallway. Bam. We got this bedroom right here. Bedroom two. Living room. Boom. Okay. There we go. So we got this little water guy here. Let's just kind of, yeah, we could leave him for right now. So we have all the rooms labeled. All right. So after I label the rooms, I like to drop my doors in. Door, you know, look at every single room and make sure that you, if, if there's a door on it, you're putting it in. So this door is here. I want to change the, um, I want to change the side of the door that the doorknob is on and you hit the little C notes, those little tiny characters to the uh, left of the letter P. You can manipulate 
the direction of the door. And there you go. D. Now I'm dropping these in. I'm just hitting the letter D. D drops it in. D. That's it. All right. We're giving it the D. Now we got this in. And what I normally do, I when I'm doing doors, if it's just a standard door, this is what Xactimate has as a standard door. Okay. If you hit the, it's going to start off there unless you change it. So I always start with what it has and then I'll come up here, drop it down. And there's a bifold because I got a bifold door right here with the, uh, with the bathroom. I'm going to drop that bifold door right there. Boom. Okay. So we got the bifold doors in after doors are in. I like to move over to the, uh, windows. Okay. So W for windows. You guessed it. Now I'm going to put a little two foot window right here. Boom. Make it two feet. I'm going to just W, drop it here, five foot window. I want to make that four. There we go. All right, I'm going to do similar, similar things. Now, remember, we don't have any windows in the bathroom, but we've got one, two, three, four windows right there. Here's what I'm going to do. When you drop window in, unless you change it in Xactimate, you drop a window in, it's going to come in at five feet. I don't want five feet, though. I want two and a half feet. So I'm going to change it to two and a half. Now, I don't want to do that for three more times, so I'm going to move it into place. Control-C, Control-V, boom, boom, boom. There we go. Now we have all of our windows in. Now, let's drop our doors in. All right. One, oh, I'm sorry. There is a door right here. There should be a uh, standard door right here. Okay. So now that we have our doors in, we have our windows in, let's do our missing walls. Letter M puts it in right here. Click and drag. All right. Now what that does, let, let's show, let me show you what it does. As it is right here, I want you to pay attention to this area. When we go to 3D mode, it's a wall. It's walled off. Okay. It is a walled off room. Come on. Walled off room. This, this is a wall. Okay. You can't, can't get in there. But when we do a missing wall, letter M, click and drag. I'm going to bring it up to a standard door opening, two and a half. All right. Once we put that in there, let's go back to 3D mode and see what it looks like. You see? See how there's that lip right there? There's a little lip. It's hard to see, but it's there. Okay, that's what we want. Now, here's what I'm going to do, too. I'm going to select that, and just like anything else, Control-C, Control-V, I'll drop it in right there. Control-V, drop it in right there. Control-V, drop it in whoop, right down here, but this one's a little bit bigger, so I'm going to make that five feet. Boom. One more look over. It's so one more. Oh, we got to put a door right here. Why didn't anybody call that? Boom. Oh, I didn't even have it in here. Look at me. Okay. And then we got one more door opening right there. There it is. Okay. So one other thing I just want to pay attention to. All right. This is definitely something when I would fi review files for other adjusters, this is something uh, um, that is often overlooked. And uh, that is uh, ceiling heights. Come over here to the ceiling height. Looks like we're okay. Okay, at the standard eight foot ceiling. Okay, so we have this little water damage annotation. Let's bring that over. We could put a couple little X's right here for the water damage. All right, I'll even use this. Let me use this arrow. I'm going to put arrow right there. Instead of saying origin of the loss, because the origin of the loss is really next door, I'm going to replace this with uh, fire or soot entry. Put it right there. And let's see. Grab this arrow, control C. We'll create another arrow, put it right next, stretch that out to the other window. We'll go to soot entry. We'll highlight that. I just double clicked it. We'll click on the letter A. We'll make it bigger, right? How about that? Soot entry, bam. Looks good. All right. How do we how are we looking? One thing, look at me. I'm in the basement level. The little tab at the bottom. Let me see if you can even see that. Oh, hold on a second. All right. I'm not sure if you can see that, but right down here, there's a tab. I did it in the basement level. All right. We're just going to disregard that. It's a little error. We'll disregard that and just keep moving on. Now, 
what we're going to do here. I'm going to get rid of these other levels. Okay. We'll actually get rid of this, get rid of our coverage, B other structures, because I, I just want this to look clean for you. We're at uh, 11 past the hour. I'm going to make this first level. I'm going to make this second level. Okay. We're going to act like just for the sake of this, that there is no other effective rooms. It's just the first, it's just the second level. We've got our sketch done. Everything is in here. Okay. So uh, we also have one last thing. There are two doors right here. Drop that in. Boom. Two doors. So we've got our, all of our sketch done. Now this is going to be again, macro time. We're going to get to questions in a second. So if you have them, ask them, we'll go over to estimate items. Bam. We got stuff already here. So we're going to get rid of these things. Look, exterior, cover day dwelling, exterior, rear elevation, left elevation. We have our rooms. I'm going to put these rooms in the order that we normally do them, the, the order that I teach everybody to do. So you don't have to think about, oh, where does this room go? Get rid of all these other ones. Now, here you go. Just like that. Look at how this is organized now. How are your estimates organized? Do you organize your estimates? If you don't organize your estimates and you're just working out of that main level, I'm going to I'm going to hurt your feelings real quick. But your estimates are trash. The trash. Okay? Accept it. Move on from it. Do something about it. Okay? So, let's move on. No questions. We're going to continue moving. So now instead of staring at this sketch, we're going to replace it with our photos. Here we go. We'll start with the rear elevation. Let's go back. All right. Before we go any further, let me tell you guys again. Exact make gold training suite. We go through, we not only bring you up to the point where you are, you know, you could get that level three certification through exact where if you're into that, not only do we bring you there, but we bring you through a bunch of scenarios just like this situations, just like this, where I'm going to take you through the estimate, show you how, show you how to do it. Okay. You know, you, you other, other places, you're not going to get that live. All right, because it just doesn't make sense for a company to uh, uh, bring you in and take you through all of these situations. I mean, we got the, the, we've got some lessons on there that that are like an hour long, more. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna go down here. We have our little elevations line item, our elevations folder. All right, I'm gonna highlight one. Select all these line items. Control C, copy. Go over here to the rear elevation. Control V, and it's gonna dump them right in there. Okay. General preparation. These are the line items that we're going to use to kind of get the elevation ready for repairs. The only thing that I'm really seeing here that I want to do, I uh, just, you know, detach and reset that light fixture. And it's already, oh, look at that. It's already in there. Who, 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 who would have thought that? Okay. So we have fascia soffit gutters. Okay. Now we have a gutter that's going on here, but that gutter is really facing the left elevation. So I'm not going to address that right now. We have fascia up here. Okay, you got fascia right there. Who thinks that a little bit of soot got on that fascia? I think it did. So we're gonna clean that fascia up. Okay, we got clean fascia right there. Who, who would, who was smart enough to put that in there? That's crazy. All right. So what's our? Let's go back. We'll do the full length of the elevation, the full width of the elevation. Six eleven plus six seven comes out to 23 and a half. Who said I wasn't good at math? So 23 and a half. Now, soffit wise, let's go in. Very small, you know, a little soffit area right here. We'll clean it. All right, throw it in there. Square foot, 23 and a half be less than that you could get technical here and just do 23 and a half divided by two because it's not a full square foot you know you probably pick up pennies as you walk by you know walk down the street too 
So I'm not going to do that. All right. So we've got everything here. There's no other soffit, fascia, or gutters line items that we need to worry about. So we'll get the all these other line items. Let's get rid of them. So doors and windows. So we didn't really get, I'll tell you now, and we reviewed this while we were going through photos. I don't have a reason, although these windows were near the fire and the siding is messed up, I really don't have a reason to replace these windows. Okay. They didn't crack from heat. You know, they didn't get soot. I didn't see soot trapped between the panes. I'm not replacing them, but I'll clean them. Absolutely. So we got a clean line item right here. Already in there. Smoker's macro. All right. If you got them, smoke them. Put the each, the quantity, the unit is calculated by each. And we want four of them. Okay. We'll get rid of the rest. All right. We're cleaning four windows. Elevation covering. Okay. Here we go. You know what? Let's clean this window too, right? Why not? Show all the windows love. Make it uniform. Five windows. Okay, elevation covering. Here's what we're going to do here. We are going to replace all the vinyl siding. Get rid of the rest of these line items here because we're not dealing with anything else. We're going to get rid of all the vinyl siding. Bam. Sheathing and underlayment. Okay, we saw that there is uh, insulation board underneath the siding. So we're going to be replacing that. And, so, and see what I'm doing here? Bam. Um, let me see here. If I just want to throw this up here. Mike said, if not deducted, it's actually included in the clean W variable when used uh, for a line item. I'm not sure what you mean on that. I'm a little confused. Uh, let me know. Um, uh, making the estimate items a little bit bigger, I will tell you what, right now, uh, let's see if I could do that right now for you. I don't know if I could do that. I, I, I do notice it is a bit small. Um, I apologize for that. I don't know if I can easily do that while. Yeah, I can't fix that. I apologize. Can't fix that right now. Uh-oh. Yeah. I don't want to mess anything up, so I apologize for that. Uh, next month, we will, uh, I'll, I'll keep that in mind, okay? Um, so, here we go. Um, here's a good question. Jason, are they vinyl windows? They are vinyl windows. So I thought that as well, but again, didn't see anything. I'm guessing maybe just because they're in a cove, but no issues with the vinyl. Um, Mike's going to explain, uh, later with a short YouTube clip. Okay. Uh, so we got the insulation board in there calculated at F. We're going to replace all the insulation board. Okay. We get rid of the sheathing. Have no reason to replace any sheathing right now. Um, additional charges. Okay. So I'm going to talk about line items real quick. Let's go to the vinyl siding line item. Now, when you click on the little picture right here, it'll give you a description of what's going on. Now, if you read the description, which if you're new to Xactimate, you should always read the description just so you have a better idea of what is actually included in each line item. Okay, so when you go on the description for vinyl siding, it includes vinyl siding, starter strip, under uh, sill trim, J trim, uh, inside and outside corner post, staples, and installation labor. All right, it talks about the average uh, quality grade. Note. Generally, a contractor will have and use standard ladders, jacks, and plank scaffolding as part of their normal equipment tool set. And as such, the labor yield assumption addresses the average time necessary for normal one or two-story applications, including the setup 
and use of equipment as needed, where the ladder scaffold platform does not exceed 20 feet. Okay, does not exceed 20 feet. So if we go back here, we have just over 20 feet. So that would mean that the scaffold platform would be up to about right here. Okay. So you'd be able to get all the way up there. There's no reason for you to use any additional charges right here. So we can get rid of that. Get rid of the rest. Now, remember, if we go back, remember we had the, um, the side, the, the siding, let me see where that picture go right here. Okay. So there's really no line item for this type of siding. I mean, this is old. I, I don't even, I'd have to research to see when this came from. It could have been this, not sure. Um, what we're going to use now, Somebody in here earlier said something very smart. They said asbestos. So could this be asbestos? Could be asbestos. Here's the thing, though. It's very, uh, what, what, what I've noticed is that insurance companies get real weird when you start calling things mold and asbestos. They don't like you doing that. Okay. They like to wait to see if anything comes of it. Cause sometimes you got asbestos stuff and they don't want to do anything. They should pay up front, um, but they don't. Not all insurance companies are really fair. So I'm going to use fiber cement lap siding, calculate at F, we're just going to get rid of it. Okay. So we're removing the vinyl siding, we're removing the fiber cement siding. We're not going back with the, vi the, the fiber cement siding because we're going to consider that an abandoned layer. Uh, we're replacing the siding, we're removing and replacing the a fan foam insulation board, and we're going to remove and replace whatever insulation um, is is behind this material right here. I'm sure it's over there too. We're going to replace that. So we got everything right here, and oh, let's calculate that at F. There we go. So as you can see right up here, we got a thirty-six hundred dollars. Now let's go back to our view of this one right here. We're gonna do a very similar deal. Now here's what I'll do. I'm just gonna use these line items. I like to recycle line items as much as possible. Do that, jump over to left elevation, dump them in. Now we have kind of a general idea of what we're gonna do, of how we're gonna uh, do our line items. So we have this downspout right here. Downspout looks like it's okay, the downspout. So. We're going to get rid of this exterior light fixture. And instead, what we'll do, we're going to do detach. Just type in detach gutter, and I get this line item. Gutter slash downspout, detach, and reset. All right. A lot of insurance companies will tell you, or claims companies will tell you, don't mess around with these names. You're not supposed to just decide on what you want to call a line item. But with this line item here, what I've noticed, it is a whole lot easier just to rename. Is it, are you estimating for the gutter or are you estimating for the downspout? I'm estimating for the downspout right here, not the gutter. So it just makes more sense. So I just changed that to downspout, detach and reset. And we want to calculate the length, uh, the, the length of the downspout. And if you look, it starts at the very top, comes all the way down and goes down for about a foot. So you can calculate for the long wall of this room by doing LL, that's a long wall. All right, and then we'll put plus one. That gives us uh, 50, almost 56 linear feet. That ain't right. We know that's not right. It really should be what, 20 and a half? Yeah, 20 and a half. Oh, because I'm going, okay. So 20 and a half, where are we at? Left elevation, 21 and a half. There we go. All right, clean fascia. All right, so we got the 21 and a half going this way. So for the clean fascia, though, we're going to do that uh, long wall because it's, in case you didn't catch on to that, with the left elevation, 
The long wall is this, this right here. So we really want the long wall plus five, four. So for clean fascia, we'll do the full length. Long wall plus five, four. We'll do the same thing. 60.17, put it in, okay? Windows, we'll clean the windows as well. One, you know, one thing that I will throw in there is what we're gonna do. We're gonna clean the windows. There's four windows on this elevation altogether. You know what else is on these windows? Screens, window screens. All right, could we clean a window screen? We probably could. I don't, but I don't even think there's a window screen line item. So let's just replace them. Window screen, boom, one to nine square feet. Move it up to where it should go. We want to do four. We'll replace them on the rear elevation as well. Here we go. Jump back over to the left elevation. All right, so we're doing the same thing here. We're moving all the vinyl siding. Removing the quote unquote fiber cement lap siding, we're replacing the vinyl siding, and then we're doing the fan foam insulation board, and we are doing the house wrap. Okay, why are we replacing all of the uh, all of the fan foam insulation board when it's really just it's not affected in other areas, right? Because you know it's affected right there, right? And in that other picture that we took right right here, sure. The fire might have disintegrated it in this area right here, but it's not affected in the, in the other parts of this very long elevation. Well, here's the thing. We are definitely going to be removing this siding, this old siding. So we're not going to remove this siding and bring it up against a, you know, we're not going to remove the siding to the point where we get to the undamaged fan foam insulation board and then just have it you know, visibly, then you have two different, you know, two different surface heights, I guess you could say, um, where you might be able to see uh, a wave where, where the siding kind of goes inward. Hopefully I'm explaining that. Um, so you're not going to do that. So you're going to you rip off all of this siding and we're going to just start from scratch. Okay. So we got our siding. We got all of that. Now here's what here, here here's the, the the appraiser part of me, right? I'm always looking for extra. I'm always looking for extras that I could throw onto the estimate. Well, guess what? Let's put you in the shoes of whoever's going to be repairing this. You know what sucks? Repairing with this amount of clearance. That sucks, right? How are you going to set that up? You can put a little ladder up there. Ladder is going to be basically vertical. You're going to be pissing your pants as you're putting up vinyl siding. It's really going to be difficult. So here's what I'm going to do. Search for siding per hour. All right, side installer per hour. Boom. Drag that up here. Put it right after the replacement. All right, let's put uh, six hours. Double click on the little notepad right here. Now I can, now I can put a little note. I'm going to put, I like to put, I like to leave my notes in italics. So includes um, delayed labor due to a lack of clearance during siding replacement. There we go. So we got an extra, throw an extra thousand bucks on there. Okay. So we have on there. So another thing that you could do just looking at, um, just looking at everything here, I mean, you could go as far as to, you know, clean the the masonry, and 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 you know what? That there, there's an argument to be made there. Let's do that too. Clean masonry, clean exterior masonry, acid wash, sure. Okay, let's put that right at the bottom here. All right. So for this left elevation, let's do similar deal. Let's do that. 60 feet, 60.17 feet, goes up, looks to be about three feet times three. There you go, it's an extra $175 to clean the length of the masonry, okay, right here. Copy that, go back over to our rear elevation, 
basically you're just going to do the same thing. We'll clean the whole length right here. 23 and a half times three. All right. So doesn't equal a whole lot. $69. It's all right. We'll throw, we, we want to throw them as much money as we possibly can. If we can justify it, we throw it on there. Here's a question. This is a good one. Cody White coming in. Does this carrier allow you to add the corner beads along with the vinyl siding replacement? Do they allow it? I'm sure that if I looked in their estimating guidelines, it won't say anything. But when I go to this line item, the vinyl siding line item, it has in here that it includes, where is it? Inside and outside corner posts. I'm assuming that's what you mean by the beads. So would I put that in? Maybe if I was a contractor or public adjuster, but you know, I gotta, I gotta show that I know what I'm doing here, and that I'm not trying to squeeze them for everything. Okay. So here's what we could do as well. On the left elevation, we could put, look for the line item, clean window opening. Look at that clean window opening. You drop that line item in there, move it over. So we're cleaning the unit itself and then we're cleaning the opening. All right, we're going to clean three standards, I'm sorry, four standard size openings and we'll clean two larger size. Now what I just did there, let me just explain what I just did here. I, I want this line item, which is the standard size, but then I want the other line item as well for the large. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to highlight this line item Hold control down, CV. That's copy, paste. And now I'm pasting the same line item again. Allow all duplicate line items. And then I'm going to have two. And then what I'm going to do here, go to the selector code right there. And most of the time to get the same line item, but a bigger version of it, you just got to do the greater, oh, I'm sorry, uh, maybe a plus sign. No, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Let's just open it up. We'll click on the little arrow right there. And we will just switch this to the, where the hell is it? Clean window opening. I guess there is no clean. Uh, there, there is no large window opening to clean. All right, so then we'll just, we will just leave it as is. All right, so we got four right there. We're cleaning four units, one, two, three, four on the other side, and we're cleaning four openings, fine. On the rear elevation, we'll do the same thing. Drop it in there, clean door and window opening, move it up where it should go, and we'll do that to one, two, three, four. Four openings. There we go. Okay. So there we go. Between both, we've got about, you know, about $15,000. You add overhead and profit on there. We got about $20,000 worth of repairs on the exterior of the home. Okay. Not bad. Now let's get to the interior. Skip forward. If you've got a question, drop it in there. Uh, Mike did just drop something in there. Um, way to make my job more difficult, Mike, because I said something and then I knew what the right answer was. <clears throat> right after I said it, there is, an, uh, there is clean OP. Is that the, well, what I was thinking, what you could do too, to make it more accurate, there is a clean window. I don't know if it's OP, the linear foot one. Clean window opening, and then there's one that's calculated by linear foot. Oh, yeah, OP. Yep. Oh, well, OPLF. You could use this one, OPLF, which instead of calculating four individual window openings, you would calculate the actual linear foot of each. That's a, uh, that's a way to do it. But, uh, you know, just like not going to do that. I'm going to just keep it as it is because I don't, you know, eh, whatever. All right. Kitchen. So we're going to drop, we're going to do our kitchen right here. And it looks like we're beginning to run out of time. So we may only have time for this kitchen uh, because this is the most significantly uh, effective room. All right. Is going to be this kitchen here. 
So we're going to spend an, an extra minute on it. Okay. So we're going to go to our kitchen line items here. Okay. Copy them all. Let's go to our kitchen. Dump them in. Gonna pop right up. Okay. Yeah, Mike brought up a, a good cook. Look at Mike. Mike, why don't you just, next time I do this, why don't you just get out and get, get in on here, all right? Um, smoke claims are a bit more specific about what's clean versus a wind claim. Yeah, a absolutely. If, you, if you're just used to doing wind claims and stuff like that, you know, this is going to be much more time. It's a, it's a lot more time consuming. Like I said at the beginning of this, I, I, I don't love, um, I, I really don't love these types of claims just because they, they, they take a lot of time, okay? So we got that in there. Here we go. So content manipulation. We'll give them about 30 minutes to move everything out, 30 minutes to move everything back. All right. Now, the great part about using a macro like this is that it has all of the common line items that you're going to run into, okay? So you're not just staring at every individual item in here. Okay, they got a refrigerator. All right, what else do they have? Oh, they got a they got a ring. I'm going to look at the lines that are here and then I'm going to make my decision on what stays and what should go. Okay? What I will say, I really want to give this room a good clean. And in order to give this room a real good clean, I got to move things like the appliances out of the way. So we're going to move everything, get everything out of the room so we can put up make those drywall repairs to the ceiling so we can replace the wallpaper so so we can clean everything okay so let's go down refrigerator we got that line item right here let's get rid of the shower rod we don't need that the microwave over the range we don't need that okay refrigerator let's move that out of the way calculate that at one the range calculate that at one all right there's no washer there's no dryer we got that in the laundry room okay we're going to come down here. All right. So we've got the, let's see here. We're going to come all the way down. We're not going to take apart the cabinets or anything like that. We're going to clean them, but we're going to do that in another room. Okay. I'm going to take this all the way down. Now, here's the other big thing that's in this uh, smoker's macro. Whenever you're dealing with smoke claims, I always like to leave the deodorized building line items in there. Okay. So we're going to leave that in there. Uh, calculated at V, that's the cubic foot of the room. So each cubic foot of the room, that's it calculates that. Let's try to get rid of the, um, you know, it's an ozone machine. It, try, it tries to neutralize the odor. If you ever stayed at a uh, Motel 6, you might have found one. All right. So ceiling and walls. So clean floor, a uh, roof joist system. Um, that doesn't really apply on this one. That's if, you know, smoke got in through the um, you know, smoke got into say the attic space, but we don't need to worry about that right here. We don't need to worry about insulation right here. We will worry about a little bit of drywall though. How much drywall should we worry about? Let's take a peek. It's just this one little area. We'll give them a sheet of drywall. So under the calculation for square foot, sheet of drywall is 32 square feet. Let's put 32 on there. All right, moving on. All right, then we have the other standard removal of drywall. All right, oops, I took a little too much right there. The standard uh, drywall removal, of course, the uh, depending on what carrier you work for, they may say that they uh, don't permit the use of uh, tear out line items because, uh, you know, that's for like water mitigation and they don't want a water mitigation invoice. They don't really care that the, that the reason why this costs more is because they're dealing with wet material versus dry material and drywall is heavier and harder to deal with when it's wet. So it's priced up a little higher. So whenever I can, I use that, okay? So 5 eighths drywall, we're gonna put that 32 square feet on there. So we're removing, replacing drywall. All right, everything else that's here, all these other uh, drywall cuts, don't really need to worry about that. So let's go to the masking of light fixtures. Are there any light fixtures in here that we need to mask up before we do some painting? There's this guy hanging on the ceiling right there. What about in this little room? I don't think I got a good picture in the little offset. Eh, got a good enough picture. Nothing in there. Okay. So we're just mask masking one light fixture. There is already a light fixture in here. So we're going to mask that at one. Boom. There we go. All right. So we're going to cover the floors. We're going to mask the floors up. 
so that we can, you know, do all of our repairs. So what we're going to do though, also we are going to clean. All right. We're going to clean some surfaces. What surfaces are we going to clean? Well, think about it. We want to clean the drywall, the painted drywall that's on the ceiling. We don't want to, we don't need to bother cleaning where the wallpaper is. And I believe that there is a separate line item for paneling. Let's see, clean, it might even already be in here. Clean pan, oh, it is already in here. It's right down here. Look at me. So we already have a clean paneling line item in there. So here's what we're gonna do. For this line item up here to clean, all we're gonna do is the ceiling. But should we clean the new drywall that we put on? Of course not. So C minus 32, and that's gonna come out to the, uh, that is the area that we're gonna be cleaning. We're cleaning all of the other drywall, okay? So whenever, I, whenever I'm do, dealing with a smoke loss like this, and I wanna do the clean seal and paint method, I always use a shellac. Shellac is just, it's just a thicker, thicker paint, so it helps mask up uh, any sort of odor that may be uh, stuck in the uh, paper of the drywall. So. On this one, you could be a penny pusher and just do the shellac on the um, old drywall and do the PVA primer on the new drywall. And you know what? Whatever. That's what I'll do. All right. I like to do these little tiny. Sometimes I like to do these little tiny things to show that I'm really playing it by the book. Right? I like to let them know I'm playing it by the book, guys. All right. So then we're Painting two coats, right? Of course, insurance carrier might be working with only wants one coat. If they don't tell you, as far as I'm concerned, if they don't tell you that they only want one coat, then they get two coats, all right? Because you're not in the business of saving money. All right, popcorn slash texture repair. I don't need to worry about that. So let's just get rid of all these line items and that takes us down to the clean paneling portion. We're gonna calculate that. Let's look at the, let's, let's look at this right here. It is, um, this is approximately, let's say, call it, call it three feet, okay? I'm going to call it three feet. We're going to calculate that three feet up from the perimeter of the floor. Looks like it might be a little bit more than three feet. We'll just keep it three feet. This is the cheap line item here. So we're going to be cleaning the paneling three feet up from the floor, all right? What I also want to do, what's not in here, this paneling did not come it did not come with this color, you know, it's wood. So what we're gonna, what I wanna do here, I want to find my seal and paint line item. I could do also, I could just go to this shellac and just add in there um, the perimeter of the, I'll do plus three PF, okay? And then that would throw an extra shellac right over the uh, wall panel in there. So we've got that. And honestly, the way that I see it, you put a shellac on there and then put paint over that. It may be a bit tougher to really see the uh, the lines here. So you could ration rationalize just replacing all of the paneling. Uh, and if we did that, then we're going to have to detach and reset all this trim right here. Um, but I'm just going to leave that in there. I think, um, you know, I, I, I think they'll have enough money to really do whatever they wanted to do. All right. So we have the shellac in there. We're cleaning the paneling. We're going to clean the paneling first and then apply a shellac over it. And then I just want to get another line item to paint over the paneling. And before I do that, here's the thing especially when you're working with the macro like this, we've got a whole lot of line items here. So if I go ahead and just go, I mean, I could do this, paint paneling. All right, I could put, you know, here's the thing. There, for paneling, there is no paint paneling two coats. It's either paint paneling one coat or it's sealing paint paneling. I do feel a little bit weird using seal and paint paneling when I'm already putting the uh, shellac one, but I also feel a little bit weird doing the paint paneling because one coat, because why am I painting the ceiling two coats and painting the paneling one coat? 
So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna use the seal and paint. It's already on there. Okay, great. But I don't see it here. It might've just moved. So scoot down to the bottom of this macro. And yeah, what I was gonna say before was when you're dealing with all these line items and you try to put a new line item in, search for it, it will go missing on you, okay? So here's what I do to mitigate that from happening. I know that the category of the line item that I want is in the PNT category. Well, here's the PNT line item. So I'm gonna highlight this line item, Control C, copies the line item. Now I'm gonna go to the line item that is just below where I want that to go. So here's the clean paneling. I want it to go right below that. So I'm going to highlight the line item that's right below it. Hold control down, hit V. I'm going to hit allow all duplicate items. And it's going to put that right underneath the clean paneling line item. From there, as it's still selected, I'm, I, I'm in the right category. I'm in the paint category, but I'm going to change the selector. I'm going to go over here and hit this little arrow. That's going to open it up. And there we go. So now I'm going to look for seal paint. Let's look for paneling. All right, so here we go. Here's all of our paneling line items. So seal paint paneling. This is what we want right here. I'm gonna double click on that. And there we go, seal paint paneling. I'm gonna do 3PF, boom, there we go. Okay, so we're all done with the paneling line items. Now we are on the wallpaper line items. We're gonna take that down. We're gonna remove and replace the wallpaper. We have the remove line item, prep for wallpaper. We have the replacement line item. So these are eight foot ceilings. Eight minus three is five. So I'm gonna do five, but instead of doing perimeter of the floor, I wanna do the perimeter of the ceiling. And the reason why I wanna do the perimeter of the ceiling is because if I did the perimeter of the floor, it's gonna deduct these little openings right here. The little openings for this door possibly, it's gonna deduct the opening for this, uh, this opening right here. But if I do the ceiling, it's gonna be a little bit different because there is less linear feet of, uh, you know, of wall on the floor than there is the ceiling. So five PC, there we go. Five PC, there we go. And five PC. Now, what we did not do in sketch was place reference blocks in there to block out the square footage that is behind the cabinets. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. Jump back over to our sketch go to the second level. Let's zoom in right here. Okay. One thing we definitely notice is this measurement is off. Let's see if we made that mistake somewhere here. This looks like it's a mistake that I had made. Let's take a peek here at my actual measurements. Let's look at the photos. Of course, it definitely happened to you. All right, so looking at the photographs, looking at my notes here, what I have is 11.7, okay, I see. Here's what we'll do, quick fix to this. I'm gonna take this room, I'm gonna move it away. So I need to extend this wall out a little bit more. It is 11.7 minus three, four, six, five, four, three, 11, three, it is eight, three. So grab this out, stretch it out to eight, three, right here. There we go. Then I'll take this room, move it there. We'll move the soot entry guy right up here move our arrows, fix them up. There's the other arrow, put that towards the other window. There we go. We'll even move, uh, these were about in the same spot. Okay, so let's go to our reference block right up here. And now we're gonna drop in our cabinets. All right, I didn't really pay attention to, didn't really care how, what the size of it was when I dropped it in. I just wanted to make sure that it's dropped in and then I'll manipulate the size. It goes from wall to wall inside this little cove, two feet, boom, there we go. All right, and then it comes out about, uh, say four and a half feet. 
It really comes out to just before it gets to this opening. So maybe it's about four feet. Okay. Block number one. We don't want that to say block number one. We want it to say cabinets slash backsplash. There we go. So we got cabinet slash backsplash. We take a look. How far up does it go? Now, here's the thing. When you're doing, if you want to be exact here while you're doing that, what you got to pay attention to is that you have this set of cabinets right here. Okay. But which goes up to, you know, call it six and a half feet, looks like. But then you have no upper cabinets right here. Okay. You have a window, but you have no upper cabinets. So just the way that I see it, it doesn't, it, it, you could make this into two different things. One being, you know, six and a half feet up, one being, you know, three and a half feet up. But since there's just a window there, really, it, it doesn't really, you're not, you, you don't need that square footage anyway. So let's just keep it as one block, put it six and a half feet up. Or you want to make sure linear foot, this is like for the baseboard. You don't want to calculate that. The ceiling linear foot, you do. It doesn't go up to the ceiling, but you're still going to want to calculate for all this crown molding. So leave that on there. Uh, remove the square foot area behind. Yes, we don't want the square foot to be calculated in. Remove the square feet under. That's like if we were replacing the floors and the floors go underneath them and we wanted to replace the flooring underneath them, we wouldn't want to calculate. Uh, we would uh, want to make sure that the square footage underneath the cabinets are calculated in there. But in this case, we're not, we're not replacing the floors. We're just going to clean the floors. And it's fair to say that there's no soot underneath there. So we want to remove that. And the area above, we want to keep that. So make sure that we have that set and we are good to go. So let's go back to our estimate items. Kitchen. Bring it back up. Okay, here we are. Here's our wallpaper. We got our wallpaper on there. So now it's properly calculated. Okay, five feet. So as far as the wall goes, we go down. Uh, what else do we need to worry about? Uh, what other clean ceramic tile? Okay, we got ceramic tile in here for things like the uh, backsplash. Okay, we got the backsplash here. And then we have this little subway tile sort of thing. So we want to clean that up, right? So we got about eight feet. This whole wall right here is about eight feet. So we have eight feet and it goes up about a foot and a half, let's say. So eight times a foot and a half is going to be, what is that, 12? Okay, then you have this area right here. So here's what we're going to do. We could do a little algebra here. Um, we don't even need to do that. So this area right here, let's see how much that comes out to. We'll go back here. So it's five, so it's three, five, okay, and then one, three. And you have this subway tile on both sides. So here's what we could do. This is about, this goes up about, what is that? Five feet, something like that. So we're gonna do five times one, three, plus one, three, plus three, five. So one, three and one, three is two and a half. Two and a half plus three, five is five, 11. So let's go back to our estimate items clean tile. Let's do in parentheses. We're going to put 511 multiplied by five, call it five feet up. Okay. While that's in parentheses, we're going to do plus, and then we're going to do eight feet. Okay. For the other one, for the, the this wall right here, eight feet times one and a half, eight times one and a half and the parentheses. And that's going to calculate both formulas right there for a whopping 30 bucks. Okay, so we've got that. Take that down, going through all these wall cleaning line items. That brings us to the crown molding. Crown molding, all we really want to do, here's what we're going to do. We're going to detach and reset a little bit of crown molding right here, just so we can do that, uh, the drywall replacement. As far as everything else goes, we're going to clean, seal, paint. So crown molding, we're going to do the width right here, 3-5. Detach and reset that so that we could do our drywall. Uh, clean trim. I think there is a clean crown molding line item. Let's go check real quick before 
clean crown molding. There we go. We'll use that. That's more proper. We're gonna have to update that. PC for the perimeter of the ceiling. Then we're gonna mask the perimeter of the ceiling too because we're gonna be painting it. So we leave that line item in there. And then we'll do, we'll get rid of the crown molding replacement. Seal, paint, crown molding, two coats, PC, drop it in there. There we go. We don't need the single coat. Now we've got, what do we got? We got tra the, the chair rail, okay? We have chair rail that goes almost the whole way around. The only thing it doesn't go over is where the subway tile is, right? Which the subway tile, we already know how many linear feet that is. As far as this area goes, it doesn't go here either where the cabinets are, but we already have a reference block there, so we don't need to worry about that. Okay, so, and the chair, so do we calculate the chair rail based on PC or PF? Well, the chair rail stops at every door opening, just like the baseboard. So we're gonna calculate that based on PF, okay? And then we're gonna deduct that three, five, for the, uh, right behind the, the range and for either side of that uh, where it's pitched out, two and a half, okay? So we're gonna clean 37.58 linear feet of the trim. I don't believe that there is a clean chair rail line item. Actually, oh, I, I am wrong. Clean chair rail right here. So we're gonna clean the chair rail, boom. We're gonna do the same thing for this. We're gonna mask the perimeter, 37.58. Okay, and then we're going to seal and paint the chair rail, 3758. Bam. All right, so we're doing that. And the last thing on here is going to be similar deal. We're going to do the uh, baseboard. We're going to clean, seal, and paint the baseboard. Let's go on here. Clean baseboard. Oop. All right, we got the baseboard on. We're going to mask and then seal and paint. Oh, let's make sure this is calculated by PF perimeter of the floor. PF perimeter of the floor for the baseboard. And there we are. Get rid of that. So we have all of the walls calculated right here. Now, unfortunately, at this point, we are out of time, it looks like we are at the nine o'clock hour. So we've been rolling live for two hours here. The floor, we could just do that real quick. We're just gonna clean the floor, 68 bucks right there. So as you go down, we have all these line items here that we can use. We have more line items for the doors and windows. We have more line items for the vanity and the cabinetry, like cleaning all the cabinets, everything like that. And then we have appliances, plumbing and electrical, things like that. So unfortunately, this took a little bit longer as I was yapping away with you guys. So before we shut this bad boy down, let's go through questions one more time. This is your final opportunity to ask questions, questions regarding Xactimate, questions regarding adjusting, whatever you want to ask. This is the opportunity that you can ask it. Um, and of course, this took a little bit longer. Um, especially answering all the questions, but we have more, more training modules, just like this. We have training modules to take you through all the technical aspects so that you can understand how to actually use the software, software called Xactimate. Let's get off the screen share software called Xactimate. This is how we make our money, right? We make our money because we know how to use this. Okay. If you're an independent adjuster, if you're working with an insurance carrier and that insurance carrier, they don't even want, they don't want you to make a coverage decision. They don't want, they don't even want you to think about coverage. There's some out there that just want you to go out, estimate damage. Don't act like you know anything, just estimate for damage. All right. So all that stuff that you learned really in that licensing course that you took, it really doesn't matter because you're not really an adjuster at this point. You're just acting as a assistant to an adjuster. You just need a license in order to be a part of the game. So at that point, how are you making your money? At that point, what do you need to know in order for you to make the most amount of money, in order for you to look the most intelligent while you're in the field? What do you need to know in order to put together? What, what are you going to need to know? In, 
what's the one thing? Of course, you're going to have like customer service. You're going to need to be, like be able to talk to them and you know talk to the policyholders and things like that. But the most important thing that you're going to need to know, you need to know how to estimate. You need to know how to scope damage. You need to know how to go into a room, look at what's going on, understand how to repair it, and then understand how to transcribe what you just saw into not just any estimating software, not some app on a phone. You need to know how to do it in this. You need to know how to do it in Xactimate. And then once you understand how to identify how, how, how to identify damage, how to, how to put together the repair process for that damage, how to transcribe that damage into the number one estimating software in the insurance industry. After you understand all of that, that's just a ticket to the dance. Then it comes down to, all right, well, how quick can you use it? How fast can you use it without sacrificing quality? Okay. That is something when you're left all on your own, it's going to take you a long time to figure out. It's going to take you a long time to figure out. And you're going to make mistakes all along the way. You're not perfect. But the best way to learn how to, the best way to learn how to use Xactimate accurately and efficiently is to learn from somebody that's been doing it a while, especially somebody that has used it for thousands, tens of thousands of estimates. So, and that's exactly why you, if you are not confident in your abilities with Xactimate, get on the Xactimate Gold training suite. It is a $1,500 training platform. And the reason why it is so much more than these $300, $400, you know, $200 little online things is because it is content heavy. Okay. These other folks, they'll teach you how to get level three certified. Great. Some folks will teach you how to get level two certified. Great. Means nothing. Exact Level three certification barely means anything. All level three certify really means is that you understand how to really use the software. You understand how to use it. Okay. If you have no experience, you've never done a claim before. Absolutely. The level three certification, it's something you're, you're, you need things to add to your resume as it is. So get the level three certification, but that level three certification is not going to help you make that much more money when you're out on a storm. It's not going to teach you how to replace roofs like that. It's not going to teach you how to do fire claims. It's not going to teach you how to do quick and easy water damage claims, but the exact make gold training suite from adjust university does. And if you want to get on just during this. So the reason why, if you haven't done it, if you haven't been a part of any of these uh, live events before, here's the way that it works. We do a special deal for everybody that's watching. Okay. And what we started doing on the last time that we did becoming an independent adjuster, we don't put the price out there. And the reason why we don't put the price out there is because we do these lives, they stay on the YouTube channel, then somebody comes in five days later, they want to get on the deal. They want to get the deal that was out before. And we don't want to do the deal anymore. The deal's over. So what we do here, you have midnight. Once midnight, June 24th, once midnight hits, this is over back to business as usual. But for right now, if you want to get in on the Xactimate Gold Training Suite for less than $1,500, email hi at adjuster-u.com with Xactimate in the subject line. I will respond to you and tell you how much it is and the options to get in on it. I want... I don't want anybody that just wants to know the price but has no intention of doing it. Last time we did this, we got tons and tons of emails and some of them were just it just people just that just want to know how much it costs. It was people that were wasting time and I had to go into the next day extending the deal out to other people cuz I just couldn't get to everybody in time. It was a freaking disaster. So if you're not interested in this, if you just want to kick some tires, just don't do this. We're just be a part of this check out the YouTube channel. There's a couple other videos that are on there. Just don't, don't waste anybody's time and don't waste the opportunity for somebody else. So Eve, send an email out over there and I will respond to you and let you know what we're doing. Okay. We have, you can, I'll tell you this right now. There's an upfront cost. There's that upfront cost, but you can use our financing uh, partnership with a firm. If you're not familiar with the firm, it's one of the biggest, um, work with the likes of, you know, 
Walmart, uh, Wayfair, other big name, uh, top name retailers. We have a partnership with them. You can get financing through there. If you have great credit, you can get 0% financing for like freaking five years, pay like, you know, whatever that is. Or um, you get a little bit, but what I uh, get a little bit of interest. What I will tell you is that if you have bad credit, you're probably not going to get approved. So if that's the case, we have other options for you to get you in anyway. So if you really need this and you're really committed to doing whatever it takes to getting being a part of this program, send an email, say hi at adjuster-u.com and put Xactimate in the subject line and I'll do everything I can to get you in. All right, let's take a look if we have any questions whatsoever here. Okay. Um, here we go. All right, Tommy. This is a good one. Tommy Ingram. I need to know how in the world I can get past only physically having enough time to do more than two a day. At this, uh, at this point with drive time, two inspections, riding both, I'm at a minimum of 12 hours. Okay. Let's talk about that, Tommy. I, first of all, I don't know what type of claims you're, you're, you're running right here. If you're doing large loss fire claims and you can only do two of those a day, I get it. That's probably it. You know, you could be real fast at Xactimate. If it's a $500,000 loss, it might take you six hours. <laughs> you, you, you know, it's going to take you some time to inspect and whatnot. But if you're doing rinky dinks, you know, claims that are like, I don't know, less than $25,000, it should not take you six hours. So you got to you, you gotta analyze what's going on there. Where are you spending a lot of time? And usually you can identify where you're spending a lot of time by simply answering what part of that process you are struggling with. What part do you hate? Do you freaking hate labeling photos? If you hate labeling photos that much, it's probably because you're stuck spend too much time doing it. If you're putzing around with line items, trying to find the right line item, you don't know where it is. You're, you're moving things around. You're looking at the photos and you're trying to figure out like, oh, well, you know, I should remove the refrigerator. If, if you're spending a lot of time on the estimate because you don't understand the repair processes and you don't know whether or not there's a certain line item or what a line item includes, then you know, you need to focus on the estimating portion. What I can tell you this, most likely, if you are asking this question, it's not because you're handling those large losses. It's just you're handling smaller losses. I'm just going to assume that right off the bat. I don't know how long you've been doing this, but it's, you got to put things in place. What I'll tell you, things in place that are going to get you to start working faster. If you're spending five, if you're spending two of those hours actually inspecting a loss, you need to cut that out. I don't know what is involved in your inspections that, that make them go that long. But that's you. You, you got to cut that out. Um, so something like this, like the the macro that we use, puts all the line items in front of you. It will take. Not only does it structure the estimate, make it look nice, but it puts the line items in front of you. You get to deduct them out. This took a little bit longer because I'm talking and going through these things, and I'm not. I'm, I'm I'm paying attention, but I'm not paying attention like I would if I was just if it was just me. Uh, and, and I'm just doing this. So, um, you know, having these line items here, it really helps because it, it, it drives your memory. It, it drives your brain to start thinking, you know, what do I need in here? You start looking at the line items. Oh, I need, uh, got to clean the cabinets. And then you're putting that in there. So little, little things like that really kind of push you to, to get it done. Well, I mean, in the, in the Facebook group, Claims Justice Success Network, we just had like a little thing going on and it's, it's always a thing where somebody says that they do a lot of inspections in a day, inspected and submitted, and, they, and that number is so much more than what somebody else is doing, that that person, sometimes that person who's doing much less, wants to say, well, there's no way you could be doing that much without sacrificing quality, without just throwing whatever back at the claims company. Well, that's just kind of trying to make sense of why you're slow. You don't know that for sure. And what I will tell you, I've done as many as like 15, 16 like claims in a day, large losses in a day. No, but just like regular ass, normal, like $5,000 claims, $7,000 claims. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've gone up to that. If I mean, if I'm well slept and I'm just on fire that day and no bullshit claims. Yeah, I've gotten up that high. But 
So kind of put that in perspective, man, when you really think about it, okay, I don't know how much you're making per single claim. Let's say you're making, which is a big, important thing. I mean, if you're handling only two claims a day, all right, let's say you're making 400 bucks a claim, all right, and, and you're only doing that, that's 800 bucks a day is what you're making. It's not bad if you're, you know, it's, it's not bad at all. But let's say you're making $300 a claim, but you're able to do five of them, five of them in a day, okay? 1500 bucks. So that's a right there alone. That's a $1,700 difference. So you owe it to yourself to figure out what it is exactly that is uh, causing you to fall behind and then attacking that head on. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'd, uh, I'd love to talk to you further about that and try to figure out uh, what exactly is uh, slowing you down here. So other than that, it looks like we are done. No other questions. All right. So guys, this was our first Xactimate live training session. Don't know if I'll do another two hours because I am freaking tired of talking. So we may do just another hour when we do it and just attack one specific part, maybe one room, something like that on the next one. Please send in your thoughts. And once again, if you want to get in on the Xactimate Gold Training Suite, send an email to say hi at adjuster-u.com. Xactimate in the subject line, and I will personally do everything I can. If this is something that you want to be a part of, if this is something that you want to learn, I will do my best to get in there to do uh, as much as I can. Uh, and I'll throw this on there at the very end. If you're looking, Cody White in, is in here. Cody White is a part of our 90 day accelerator program to become an independent claim field property adjuster. There's a lot of information in that course. Again, it is highly recommended. I've been using Xactimate constantly for the past five years, and I still learn some things that I did not know before, okay? If you need to learn more about Xactimate, quit, lying, quit, quit trying to rationalize why you don't need to do be a part of this program. You are losing money by not being a part of the program. That's just, that's just it. You're losing money. Guys, we're done. Thank you guys all so much for joining me on this live stream. Adjuster University Live, go check out adjuster-university.com. If you want to be a claims field property adjuster, if you want to learn from the likes of me, check out our 90-day accelerator program. Go to adjuster-university.com forward slash get started to watch a uh, more formal web class where I go over what everything is and you know, how this industry works. You can be a part of that. Or just go to adjuster-university.com forward slash let's go when you're ready to just pull the trigger, make the decision, and get on with the likes of Cody, okay? Guys, thank you so much, and I'll see y'all on the next, and, and this upcoming Tuesday, I'll tell you this right now, this upcoming Tuesday, we have the Adjuster University Live becoming a, a independent adjuster. So if you're not an independent adjuster and you don't want to wait for the more formal web class, go check that out. Check it out on Tuesday. We're going to be running a special deal that day too.